Let me tell you about Codex Alimentarius. Let me define it for you. Let me tell you, let me help you understand the enemy. And let me assure you that absolutely nothing that I'm going to tell you is exaggerated, is interpolated, or is imagined. Everything I'm going to tell you is documented. And it's, a great deal of it is documented on my website, which is www.healthfreedomusa, one word, healthfreedomusa.org. Let me back up and tell you that I've been watching Codex come toward us for about the last decade. After the Second World War, the Nuremberg Tribunals were held in which people who had committed crimes against humanity were judged by the world community in a court run by the United States and Britain, and they were sentenced to terms in prison if they were found guilty of crimes against humanity. One of the people found guilty of crimes against humanity was the president of a, a huge industrial megalith called I.G. Farben. I.G. Farben produced the gas used in the gas chamber, Cyclone B. They produced the steel for the death camps and the railroad lines. They produced the munitions. They produced chemicals. They produced all kinds of stuff. They produced pharmaceuticals. Big, 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 big pharmaceutical company. So the president of IG Farben was convicted of crimes against humanity. Now, he's a sort of artistic fellow and creative. He was the one who was responsible for the slogan that people saw as they entered Auschwitz, usually for the last time. Arbeit macht frei. Work brings freedom. Creative sort of fellow. So he was sitting in jail and he said, well, that didn't work. <laughs> what else can we do? I've got it. Food. He who controls food controls the world. So when he got out of jail, he went to his UN buddies and he said, have I got an idea for you. If we take over food worldwide, we have power worldwide. And his UN buddies said, cool idea. And so they created a trade commission. That's a very important pair of words, a trade commission called the Codex Alimentarius Commission. It is not a public health commission. It is not a consumer protection commission. It is a trade commission. Trade is about what? Money. Money. Yeah. Business. Trade is about profit. Well, they said in 1962, we're going to work toward total global implementation of Codex Alimentarius on December 31st, 2009. Long term. And they set up a bunch of committees, committees on fish and fishery, fats and oil, fruits and vegetables, ground nuts, uh, nutrition and foods for special dietary uses, and so on. There are currently about 27 codex committees. It's a huge bureaucratic monstrosity. It's immense. Codex has promulgated well over 4,000 guidelines, standards, and regulations on everything, everything which can legally be put into your mouth with the exception of pharmaceuticals. They are not part of Codex. Important. Now, here's the history of Codex Alimentarius before 1962. The Austro-Hungarian Empire said, we need rules by which the courts can rule on cases involving food. So we'll have regulations and rules that the courts will enforce. That's how they get their weight. That was called the Codex Alimentarius, and it was put into place around 1893 and lasted until the end of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the First World War. So the idea was there in the Germanic tradition. We need rules, lots of rules, lots and lots of rules. We need a lot of rules. Let's have rules for everything to do with food. So it was sort of a natural extension 
for the German industrialists to say, we'll go back to the good old days of Codex Alimentarius, back when we had them in the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Cool. So they started promulgating their rules and regulations, and they were voluntary. They were sort of guidelines. Now, Codex Alimentarius Commission is administered by the World Health Organization, WHO, and the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization. They fund Codex, and they run it at the request of the UN. So they're mommy and daddy to Codex Alimentarius. And that's very interesting because they're supposed to be about health and food worldwide. Some conflicts of interest that we'll talk about. So Codex started promulgating regulations and rules. The World Trade Organization, you see, accepted Codex when, it was, when the World Trade Organization was formed in 1994. Okay? They said, well, how are we going to dis decide trade disputes around food if we don't have a set of rules? I know we'll accept the Codex Alimentarius rules. And all the members of the WTO worldwide will, get ready for an Orwellian term, harmonize with our standards, with the Codex standards. If two countries go into the World Trade Organization, dispute resolution process, and one of them is codex compliant, and one of them is not codex compliant, the one that is codex compliant automatically wins regardless of the merit of the case. People are using codex compliance as a weapon in a much bigger economic battle. So, every country in the world is racing to do what? to become Codex compliant. And you have to remember that Codex does not serve consumer well-being, does not serve health. It serves what I call the five bigs. Big Pharma, Big Chema, Big Biotechna, Big Agribiz, and Big Medica. Little you and little me are not served by Codex in the least. Okay, so what does Codex do? Why do I care enough about Codex to close my practice and stop treating patients who came to me from around the world to help them regain their health and be radiantly well with non-toxic means, which is a very satisfying thing to do. I love it. And it also provided me with an income. I, that was nice. Nutrients under Codex not only are limited to those nutrients on the positive list, and we anticipate there will be 18 of them. What we're talking about is waking up one morning and being very surprised to find that high-potency, therapeutically effective, clinically significant nutrients are now illegal in the Heroin is illegal. Not available with a prescription. Illegal. If these nutrients have any impact on the human body, they are illegal. That's just the vitamin and mineral guideline. Let's talk about milk. Because under Codex, every dairy cow on the planet must be treated with Monsanto's recombinant bovine growth hormone. Furthermore, every animal on the planet must be treated with subclinical antibiotics must be treated with subclinical antibiotics and must be treated with exogenous growth hormones. Codex requires, mandates, that all food be irradiated unless it's eaten locally and raw. Nine of the 12 worst organic chemicals known are pesticides, not surprisingly, because they kill things. And of course, we have many um, uh, processes and enzyme systems that are very much like insects and other pests, so they're not too good for us. But Codex has different ideas. Codex has brought back seven, seven of the nine forbidden POPs that 176 countries banned worldwide. Dieldrin, Aldrin, hexachlorobenzene, 
and the food that is imported from other countries that contains these substances cannot be stopped at our borders because otherwise it would be, God forbid, a trade violation. That's how Codex works. Codex, according to the World Trade Organization and the Food and Agriculture Organization, joint projections. Now, I didn't make this up. Please, if you unfastened your intellectual seat belts, put them back on again. If you do the numbers in the WHO FAO projections, the epidemiological projections, they estimate, not I, because what do I know? They estimate, they're the experts, that just the vitamin and mineral guideline alone when it goes into global implementation on December 31st, 2009, will result in a minimum of three billion, that's B, bad, big, billion deaths. One billion through simple starvation. Those folks who die are not particularly economically successful from the point of view of the corporations. When you're starving to death, how much good can you do when you, the issue is how much can you buy? Not a lot. Forget them. Aha, but the next two billion. They will die from the preventable diseases of undernutrition. So we're talking about food regulations that are in fact the legalization of mandated toxicity and undernutrition. It will be illegal if there's a famine in, you know, wherever there's a famine, to ship high nutrient density biscuits to that country. And it will be illegal to distribute them. That's what we're talking about.